Hi Shrikant. So nice to have you here on the Miraculous Being show. Hi Shweta, very good afternoon. It's my pleasure and privilege <laughs> to be on the show. I think this has to be the shortest uh, prep time we've had to actually record a conversation. We met on Tuesday and we are here recording this conversation on Friday. So I'm super super psyched for this uh, impromptu conversation. Super excited or super psyched? Super psyched. It's excited and that. <laughs> Okay. Lovely. So, I think uh, just to give you a quick introduction, so Miraculous Beings is a guest interview part of the Being Miraculous show, and we really interview people who I believe epitomize the spirit of miraculous. So, miraculous is the Greek word from the root word miraki, which means to do something with all your love, devotion, and passion. And we get guests here who I believe really worked hard to find what they love to do and are doing it brilliantly. So, thank you so much for being here. And I'll probably request you to begin with, uh, you know, your introduction and sharing your journey so that the audience is up to speed, and then we can delve deeper. Yeah, we'll start. <laughs> and bring you up to speed very quickly. Yeah. So I was born in a very humble family. My parents never went to they went to school, but they didn't go to high school. My father dropped out uh, fifth grade. Mother dropped out eighth grade. My father started working as a assistant to a cook. He worked for a garment industry. So that is how he started. So when both of them got married, my father, my mother did not know how to cook. So my father taught her how to cook. Anyway. And then four kids. Uh, I'm the second. Four boys. We lived in a very small apartment, maybe about 500 square feet, a kitchen, a living hall, right? Maybe an attached bath and a toilet. That's about it. So all all the six of us just lived in that place. The only thing that my father was very particular is was that he said education is the only thing which is going to bail you out. So he said whatever it takes is going to be invest the money to educate us thank god we all studied well and god's grace i went to iit 8690 i finished my graduation and then i started working i did not uh, join corporate 86 um, I said okay let me just explore something in my own and did a couple of startups it didn't go all that well and then joined the startup uh, <clears throat> by that time Five years had gone by and I got married as well. And then I got opportunity to work for a UK-based IT services company when they were shorting up, uh, when they were setting up their subsidiary in Rwanda. I was the first employee, grew that organization to about <clears throat> 500 people in like five years. When I left in 2001, I joined in 1995, November 2001, Jan, and I left. I was a country head for, I had to leave because I was not, and getting along with my boss. So that's a different story. Came to Bangalore, worked for Samsung for some time, and then I worked for Microsoft. In 2005 is when I felt that hey, I'm getting stuck in my career. I need to do something about it. So I reached out to somebody who called himself a coach and then went through the journey of being coached. That time I made up my mind. I've done with corporate in about another five years. I'm out. <clears throat> so by the 20th year of completing my tenure in the corporate world, I need to get out and do something in my own. So luckily I got uh, introduced to the ICF way of coaching. Uh, Microsoft had got uh, a gentleman by the name David Rock, Neuro Leadership Institute. So he came in person, he delivered the training. I really liked the concept of coaching. I'm going to take a leap of faith and get into it quick, Microsoft. Without realizing, hey, coaching skill is a Separate skill, business skill is another skill. So started without knowing anything, failed. Miserably, I failed. Uh, one year I did that, thing worked in my favor. Then I did a couple of startups with my friends. And then suddenly realization came, you let the corporate world to do this? No. Go back to coaching. Went and upgraded myself as a PCC. In 2016, I got my PCC. Again, 2017, I want to set up a coaching business. Invested a lot of money and unfortunately we got cheated. So I said, enough, yeah, no more coaching, go back to consulting. Uh, for a lot of, so 2018, I started working for a uh, Indian based startup consulting. I was doing quite well. Uh, it was in wellness space. I really enjoyed the work that I was doing. I'm into wellness, running, and this and that and all. Then uh, 2020, March, pandemic hit. 
I lost my assignment. <clears throat> then I said, now what do I do? So my son also was exploring a couple of startups. He also didn't know what to do. So both of us together, we said, okay, now let's do this. For the third time, uh, touch wood, uh, we have been doing extremely well. We, Of course, we had our share of uh, ups and downs. But uh, yeah, it, it turned out to be pretty good. Pretty good. So right now, I only do coaching. When I say coaching, anything, any work related to coaching. So people, uh, clients that come to me on their own, corporates who reach out to me, uh, aspiring coaches, uh, they come to me, I mentor them. And I work with a couple of training organizations, which is delivering coach training, to do some work for them. So that's pretty much my journey is so far. Thank you for sharing uh, your story so beautifully and uh being very authentic about all the ups and the downs through the pro- process. And the first question that probably comes to my mind is um, through these ups and downs, uh, you know, what were top two or three lessons that you learned that stay with you even after so many years? One of the top two or three lessons. Okay. Regardless of what is happening in your life, this has really helped me to stay true to my core values. Right. Um, so I have worked for big corporates, Microsoft being one of the biggest corporates. Um, so I have what I'm going to say may not go well with people who are listening to it. There's something that I, I for some reason, I'm not still able to align is that people who don't do the work take credit because they have. Uh, I don't know whatever you call it. They have the gift of the gap or whatever you want to call it. They take credit from the people who are doing the real work. right? So I said, whatever happens, I'm not going to do that. That does not align with my values. right? So even through the tr- struggles that I was going through, I said, whatever happens, I'm not going to compromise on my values. Right? So that has actually kept me in good step. It's like you say, it's like the compass. So you have a destination to go and if you're going off, then the compass will put you on track. Just to reach the destination, I didn't want to take shortcuts, right? I had to fail, I had to fail. Absolutely, yes. So, yeah, no matter what happens, if you stay true to your core values, eventually you will emerge victorious. So let me put it that way. That is one thing. And the other thing that I strongly believe also is that uh, if you are going through a challenge, um, I don't know whether you uh, you believe in God, I, I believe in God, uh, is that uh, God is putting a challenge in front of you because he truly believes that you can handle it. So that is the way that he helps you to grow. Right. So these are the two biggest learnings. So anything which comes my way, yeah, at that point in time, I may get a little hassled and rougher, but eventually I know I will go through it. Uh, beautiful lessons, right? One, staying true to your values and two, believing in that God or higher force or whatever you have your faith in to know that you will be carried through no matter what. That brings me to a question which usually, uh, you know, these things that I face when I work with millennials, right? Uh, it's one thing to... When you know your values and then to live through it, right? To make choices by it and abide by it. But uh, for, say, Gen Zs or millennials who are still in that stage of even identifying what their values are, how would you say they can approach it? Because it's one to know that, hey, I know I stand for A, B, C, and I will not compromise on these values throughout my life. But for those who do not even know what those A, B, Cs are, how would you recommend they get started in discovering that value for themselves? If I had to recommend something, I would say role model. Yeah, Find a role model that you truly believe, hey, this is the person that I look up to. And then uh, these are some traits that I want to imbibe and emulate and showcase and so on and so on. Right? So that is one way. Uh, see, values primarily they come when you're growing up values will come from your parents and then the way that you're growing up 
and eventually your values may change because sometimes you figure, hey, my values are not actually aligned with my parents' values because they are like whatever is. So, so values uh, are ever evolving. Um, so that is one thing. So you, the easiest way to do that, I guess, is to you know find somebody who that who inspires you, who motivates you, and just follow certain things that they are doing, and that is the easiest way to do it. I I think that's what my son is doing. So both my sons, that's that's what they are doing. They are doing that. Their friends are doing that. So I keep talking to a lot of millennials. Right? So talking about kids who are between 20 to 30, 30 years. So I keep uh, talking a lot. I interact a lot with them. So sometimes oldies, we, we think, hey, these kids don't have value, but it's such a wrong judgment uh, and an, an assumption. Uh, I know some kids like amazing. Right? So they have very clear what is their destination, uh, how, is, how is it they want to go through the journey. I'm looking at some kids who are like some 25 and thinking when, when I was 25, did I, did I really have a, a, the kind of a vision these kids have? Uh, I mean, maybe the answer is that is true. I think uh, the internet era has uh, forced them all or at least exposed them all to so many things, uh, all of us included, right? right? Uh, that we couldn't right, even right. imagine uh, in right. our childhood probably. And uh, the one thing that comes to my mind also is that, you know, you spoke about how, uh, you know, this is probably your third attempt at setting up a coaching practice. And, uh, you know, there were failures before that. And I'm curious in terms of, you know, uh, what kind of lessons did you learn through that process? And how did you find the courage to begin again? See, this is, uh, I don't know, I have still learned the lesson. A lot of people ask me this question. I strongly believe uh, God puts people in your life for a reason. Right? I somehow have this tendency to blindly trust them. Right? Give them the merit. So God has put somebody in your life, give them the merit and go with whatever you know, they showcase them to be. They, they may be authentic, they may not be authentic. You don't know. And that's, they're tested, right? So if they turn out to be authentic, that means you have you have a person for life. And if they're not authentic, you learned a lesson. So in my second when second time when I set up the coaching business, actually um, this is so sad, right? So this this person claimed to be a leader in one of the largest spiritual organizations in the world and talks to you so nicely and say, "Hey, this is what we're going to blah blah blah." So I'm like all do with this person, the way that the person is speaking and this and that. And also you just go and put some money. I didn't realize after oh, four weeks that it's all hollow. Uh, so if I, have some, if, I, if I have invested the money and I'm supposed to get some value, instead of that, I'm, I put the money and I'm supposed to add value to this person means, what the heck is that? Right? So hard lessons. Uh, I don't think I still I, I still learned it. I, of eventually, I hope I will learn. One is, yeah, people will come. There will be people who will cheat you, just because one or two people are going to cheat you. Just don't, um, just say, don't mistrust the other people who come into your life. So let me put it that way. Like you had a bad experience, which is okay. It's a lesson that you learn, move on. Don't hold on to the lessons. Don't whine about it. Just forgive and move on. If you keep holding on to it, then you're holding on to the past. If you're holding on to the past, how are you going to go into the future? It's, it's not possible. So yeah, now that I'm, I'm getting some clarity on the question. So don't hold on to your past failures. Learn the lesson. Just move on. Beautifully said, right? Just because your past interactions, if there was a failure, uh, not to view everybody with the same lens and be able to trust and do again and not hold on to what happened in the past. Uh, I think that that's, that's powerful lessons there. And uh, if we were to digress a little bit, I think one of the reasons we got talking was from one of your LinkedIn posts. And for those of you who don't know, Srikanth is a 
great LinkedIn creator. So please go check out his profile. He shows up almost every single day and posts something great and informative there. Uh, and one of the videos that he had posted was talking about this uh, commitment and the levels of commitment, right? That's what got us talking. And we said that there are four levels of commitment, one wherein you're not really into it and four wherein you have giving it all and, you know, you're going to keep doing it no matter what comes. And we were talking about this distinction that when it comes to our work, when it comes to responsibilities that we have committed to other people, to the external world, no matter what, we kind of reach that level four wherein, you know, we have to save our face. So, you know, we have to do what it takes because we've committed to it. But when it comes to our personal goals and things like that, we always are somewhere between a one and a two. And, you know, if maybe when time permits, that's when we'll do it. Uh, curious to hear your take, you know, what, what makes this commitment so different between our personal goals and other goals? The, okay, let me just rephrase that. Ideally, the most important person in your life should be you. <laughs> so it's like you when you get into the flight and the flight attendant takes you to the whatever the safety instruction they say, put the mask on you first before in case of emergencies. Right? So what happens most of the time is that we are so busy taking care of the needs of the others, we tend to completely not take care of ourselves. So we don't realize that the most important person in our lives is us. For me, it is me. For you, it is you. So when I say that, I, I don't mean be selfish. Right? Only if you take care of yourself, right? you can be of help to others. If you have to monetarily contribute to somebody else's life, you need to have enough money to do that. So you, okay. So just in simple terms, you need to be surplus in any area that you want to help somebody else. You need to be surplus in time. You need to be surplus in money. Unfortunately, a lot of us don't realize that. Uh, so it's all about, hey, um, the focus is not you. That's the reason they don't commit, commit yourself, right? Uh, all of us know theoretically that we need to maintain our health. And all of, that. all of us know that, hey, how to reduce weight. All of us know that. It's just that we don't do it. So I had, I mean, this gentleman passed away. Uh, his name is Jim Rohn. He says, what is easy to do is not easy to do. For example, can you do 10 push-ups every day? 10 push-ups, that's it. You wake up in the morning, do one push-up. After one hour, you do one push-up. So 10 hours during the day, you can do 10 push-ups. So will 10 push-ups doing in on one day, will it make a difference? It may not make a difference. Will it make a difference if you continue doing it for about a week? It may not. If you continue doing the same thing for about a month, will it make a difference? Of course it will make a difference. If you do this for one whole year, will it make a difference? It will make a huge difference. So basically what is easy to do is not easy to do. So, so when you, when you just have to commit to smaller things. right? If you can't commit to bigger things, okay, it's okay. So let's take uh, things step by step. How do you run a full marathon 42 kilometers? by just taking a few steps forward. So if, if we just can commit to smaller things and be true to ourselves, I think it should not be a problem, right? Your language has to change. Yeah. If you say, I will, you know that, I'll, I'll try. <laughs> I'll try means it's not happening. It's a done deal. <laughs> done deal. Hmm. Okay. So it's a done deal and not I'll try. And you know, what you were saying uh, reminded me of this quote. I don't remember uh, which book I read it, but there was this place where they said that we overestimate what we can do in the short term and underestimate what we can do in the long run, right? Uh, we try to pack our hours and our to-do list today. And we don't realize that if we were to do very small things and stay committed to it in the long run, the results are far more deeper, right? Yeah. True, true, right. And uh, the other thing that also comes to my mind as we talk about personal commitment to ourselves, right? Uh, one of the things uh, I've seen you talk about is this concept of self-leadership, right? Taking ownership of yourself and really, uh, you know, maybe rather than me telling what is self-leadership, I'll open it up to you. Uh, when you say the word self-leadership, what, what do you mean by it? It's very simple. Walk your talk. Hmm? Just walk the talk. Yeah, just going back to the same thing, commitment. If you say that you're going to do it, just do it. So they say, uh, especially uh, parents, right? So they want their children to do this and they don't watch TV, study, blah, blah, blah. And you tell your children, don't watch TV. And if you just keep watching TV, what are they going to take away from you? Right? So so I, I, I got two kids. Till date, I have never told them to study. 
if I want them to study, all that I do is, I mean, you're not watch TV for like, I don't know, for 20 years or something like that. Switch on the TV, take a book and start reading. And they look at me and they start doing the same thing. Right? They say, uh, monkey see, monkey do. They say that. I mean, I'm sure you heard about that, right? So, it is better to demonstrate what you are expecting out of others. I just took my kids as an example. Demonstrate. This is what I'm expecting out of you. Just do it, right? Let them see you and let them do it. It's simple. Self-leadership is not a big thing. Just walk the talk. Instead of just sitting there and preaching, just do it. That's about it. Interesting. And in an age where, you know, we talk more than we do, uh, I think this is a very uh, interesting, uh, I mean, it's a, probably the need of the hour wherein we are able to do it first and then talk about it. Uh, interesting. And, uh, you know, you work with individuals in helping them get to that state of self-leadership. And uh, what kind of transformations do you see when people are able to walk that talk and really own, uh, you know, their lives and their dreams? Uh, what kind of transformations have you seen as you've coached people? See, um, see, transformation is a very big word, Shweta. So let me just put that in perspective so we get a good understanding of what transformation means. The simplest example that all of us uh, can see in front of our eyes is a caterpillar becoming a butterfly. Right? The caterpillar is a war, butterfly is an insect. This is ugly, this is beautiful. Right? So transformation happens when there is massive destruction and disruption. So the caterpillar destroys itself, becomes goo, and from that uh, there's a cocoon formed, and then the butter, when the insect and the wings and all of that, and then butterfly breaks the cocoon and comes up. That is what transformation is, right? Now a lot of us misunderstand change as transformation. Okay? So a small caterpillar becoming a big caterpillar is change. A caterpillar becoming a butterfly is transformation. A lot of us, this word transformation has been abused. So every time somebody comes into a, a, a expression call with me, they ask me how many people have transformed. I said, none. Like, none? I said, yeah, none. I said, I cannot transform it. I cannot transform it. I can only take get someone in my life and put the person on the path of transformation. I can show the path. They have to transform themselves. What is the path? They should be willing to destroy themselves. When I say destroy themselves metaphorically, destroy their own beliefs, destroy whatever, they have atti attitudes, ego, things like that, right? Everything which is holding them from moving forward, they have to let that go, destroy, uh, uh, kind of challenge the values, validate their values, beliefs, mindset, so on and so on. So destroying of all the uh, unwanted negative things which are holding them back from where actually they can reach. So that's what I mean by destroying, right? So your caterpillar becoming a butterfly, the destruction is that uh, if, if I have to draw an analogy here to destroy your ego, all of that you know? negative mindset, negative beliefs, this, that. So, if you ask me, uh, I'm once again, I'm not claiming this, I'm not transforming anybody. Let me just be very clear on that. How many people have I put in the path of transition? I visibly see changes, right? Uh, there is this girl who comes from um, a uh, northeast state, uh, works as a, started working as a, uh, I don't know what she was doing, security for a BPO company. And then today she works as a lead software engineer in one of the leading MNCs. So these are people that I see actually they are transforming in front of my eyes. Not because of me, because of me. Because they took a decision to transform and I'm just being there. If you ask me, maybe I'm creating that cocoon for them and allowing them to hey, go through the process and creating a safe space for them to go through transformation. Right? So that is one example I can give. Um, the other example I can give you is, of course, there's this boy who started working as a security guard 
at the age of 17 security guard he might be security guard at the age of 17 today uh, he works as a cyber security specialist for one of the leading mnsc uh, so these are transformations you you actually can see happening in front of your eyes and i don't take credit for anything i don't i i will never say that i have transformed anybody and that is not that is the truth beautifully said right um again following that same path of walking the talk it is not just for you it is also for your clients to really commit to that change and walk the talk in making that change happen and that's when that change becomes that lasting transformation over a period of time um, beautifully expressed the other thing that probably also comes to my mind is uh, you know you mentioned this aspect about how your father had this belief that education was the most important thing and uh, for a lot of us we believe that education ends once we move out of our schools and colleges and that's where education is officially done uh how have you ensured that it actually continues throughout your life actually and the real education started only after i left college okay that is the thing uh, i'm just going back and referring to jibron once again i really like his work simple work he so much used to he says formal education will give you a living uh self education will give you a lifestyle i uh, repeat that formal education will give you a living self education will give you a lifestyle so i strongly believe uh, shweta the day that you stop learning you start dying for me um, it's a it's a constant process i would say the amount of books that i have read the amount of audios that i have gone through the amount of videos i have watched it's incredible compared to what i have done in my 12 years of schooling for either engineering or not beautifully shared and um, i'm going to ask a question that i always get so i think i personally believe in the same philosophy that once you stop learning is when the day you stop learning is when you start really you know uh, dying and when you're not able to accept newer uh, believes and things that you're probably not against that having the tolerance to things that you may or may not agree but still having that room in your space to uh, evaluate it and consider it in your mind right and uh, this is a topic that i probably discuss and broach with a lot of my clients as well in terms of how do you really make time for self education how do you make time for that learning or even if not learning self reflection and awareness right and the thing that i really get back is such with where's the time you know where's the time we are so busy we are so busy hustling doing this and that where is the time so i'm going to ask that to you uh for those of them who who probably believe that yes education is important and it is necessary uh where should they hunt for that time that they can't find let me ask you a question one hour in a day is what percentage of the total day 4% hmm. it's 4% yep yeah. so if somebody tells me i don't have 4% of my entire life for my learning i mean wow really 4% okay 4% is too much what 2% <laughs> so if you're telling me that you can't take 30 minutes out of your entire day to learn something to improve yourself i i find it very difficult to digest it is not about time it is about the intention how much time do you watch tv okay. how much time okay. i used to work in the corporate people used to go for smoke break and i i don't do that right uh, so i'm like you know old man no i don't want to waste time you will go out and smoke and you will gossip and all how is it going to help how is it going to help or add value to my life if i come and hang around with you right so it's about the priorities it is never about the time shit it's never about the time it is your priority and it's your intention i always tell even my clients they come and tell stories jim brown says something i i quote jim brown because he, he he tells such profound wisdom he shares in simple man he says the story that you told it doesn't fix it doesn't fit in this box so if you're telling me i don't have the time to read a book for 15 minutes a day if i don't have the time to 
listen to an audio for 15 minutes a day, then I have a problem with that. Okay, let me just give a shortcut. Okay, so you can combine one activity with another activity. Okay, so if you if you want to be if you want to stay physically fit, you need to do some activity. Let's assume that you decide to go for a walk or a job or something. Subscribe to Audible or Spotify or whatever audio. Just put it, plug it in your ear. But just do that. You do. You do two thing, two things at the same time. They are completely disconnected, right? So it is not multitasking. So whatever you hear going, whatever doesn't go in, doesn't go in. But you will get both of both of them done. So one tip. Also the other thing. I don't have the time for my own fitness. These are lies. Nice. Yeah, absolutely. I think the number four person will always remain with me, and also the fact that it's never about the time; it's the intention and the priority to get something done. Uh, we go back to that: it's a done deal, not. Yeah, it's a done deal. Yes, I'll try. <laughs> Lovely, Shrikant. I mean, uh, great, great pearls of wisdom here. And uh, usually, with all our guests, we have this rapid file segment. Uh, are you game to do that uh, with us? Rapid fire. <laughs> Worst thing, I'll fail. So, what is the big deal? <laughs> okay, we'll we'll start with easy uh, warm up questions. Um, are you a morning person or a night person? You're yeah, absolutely morning person. Hmm. Uh, punctual or always running behind schedule? Always punctual. All the ways. Okay. Okay. Books, podcasts, or in your case, should I say videos also? Which is your preferred medium of consuming content? Uh, now it has become mostly audio, and then video, and then books. It, it used it used to be about ten years ago we didn't have access to audio and videos. It just moved. Now it has changed. So, yeah. Lovely. Okay. Uh, you spoke about. Uh, you know, having role models and sort of emulating qualities that you look up to them for. Uh, who would you say are your role models, and what do you really admire? Dr. Abdul Kalam. I don't have to think. Dr. Abdul Kalam. Mm -hmm. What do you admire most about him? Simplicity. Simplicity, honesty. And because I see so many books, that I'm going to ask you this question. Um, and you share a lot about these books as well, right? So, what are probably top three books that changed your life, or how you view life? One book uh, that I got hold of about twelve years ago, I can remember the month, April twenty ten. I got hold of this book called The Courage to Succeed, written by a four-time Olympian. That time he was three-time Olympian, called Ruben Gonzalez. So that video that we spoke about, four levels of commitment, that is from that particular book. Right? I have read that book in the last twelve years more than twenty times. You can tell me a page number and I'll tell you exactly what they are on the page. Right? Highlighted, uh, written notes, all of that. And that particular book, I have mandated, uh, it's a mandated reading for all my clients and all my mentees. And in the last 12 years, I must have gifted it to more than 200 people. Many people come on an explosion call, they crib, complain. I just take their address and say, yeah. Take it. It's my gift for you. That is the topmost. Okay. There is many other books. Uh, as far as coaching is concerned, I read a lot of books. One of the books, uh, if you're a coach, very recently I had recommended this book called The, the Heart of the List of Focus Coaching, written by Marilyn Franklin. It's a fantastic book. So far, the best book that I have read on coaching is a book titled A Shift in Being. Very deep. So very deep. Um, yeah. So these are top of the mind. Uh, do you believe in routines? Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so if I were to ask you, what are top three non-negotiables in your routine? Before I, when I get up in the morning, before I talk to anybody, I have to brush my teeth. Without brushing my teeth, I will not talk to anybody. The moment I wake up, it doesn't matter what time it is. It could be 2.30, 3.30, 4 o'clock. I will have to brush my teeth. Without that, I cannot talk. So that is one routine. Uh, 
top of the mind routine that is the other routine which uh, my wife is not very happy is that i need my food on time my breakfast has to happen between 7:30 to 8:00 uh, 7:30 to 8 my lunch has to happen between 12:30 to 1 my dinner has to happen between 7:30 the dependency unlike brushing my teeth where sat the mic cut out for this not the mic okay so that is one routine uh, <laughs> and the other one is uh, my fitness my fitness uh, the worst case i have to go for a walk the worst case mm. right otherwise i'm i'm doing some yoga doing some jogging doing some workouts uh, if nothing unless i'm you know sick and i can't wake up uh, that is that has happened it's amazing uh one thing about you we can't find online one thing about me you can't find online my data birth <laughs> how is that learn online in today's world <laughs> anyway hmm we can try as much as we want but we don't find it ah <laughs> uh, i hope the listeners are trying other things than doing that <laughs> okay okay and uh, this is the last question i have from my side but what is the one takeaway that you would want listeners who've spent probably the last 30 35 minutes listening to our conversation to take away in their lives this is something that i actually uh, teach um, my clients the way that companies have a vision and a mission for themselves you as an individual need to have a vision and a mission for yourself otherwise if you don't have a vision for yourself how do you know where you're going yeah so it can be as easy as it can be but just just create a vision for yourself this is where i want to end up in my life if you can put a vision and then you will get some methods to make that happen for yourself if you don't have it then it's a problem so so powerful thank you and i know so i said that that was my last question but i have one more um <laughs> is there anything that you probably wanted to share with the audience that didn't get covered uh, in our conversation till now okay a lot of people um uh, ask me this question because you know that i the only the only thing that i know i do is coaching a lot of people ask this question do i really need a coach the answer that i give them is that warren buffett bill gates michael jordan all of them have coaches what makes you think that you don't need a coach I should put a snippet of this audio in my landing page. <laughs> <laughs> so powerful, right? And I think it uh you know I I have also been that kind of a person who used to you know believe in self sufficiency and independence and not really asking for help at my previous avatar. Uh so you know we are we're trained and conditioned to believe that we don't need help and rather you know you can be miserable and fail but you don't ask for help right that is considered a weakness but not uh you know stupidly taking longer times to learn the same thing that is considered bravery in our society so how maybe if we were to go a little deeper in that how would you uh recommend people listening in to to identify when they should approach a coach actually they should approach a coach any time in their life see if they are going through a challenge reach out to somebody who can help you get out of that challenge or if everything is going on well question yourself hey is that all that i want to do in my life yeah so <laughs> there's no there's no time <laughs> you just go reach out to somebody and ask a question very powerful thought right because uh, um often you know when people say you know what kind of problems do you solve as a coach and i'm like it's it's not problem solving as a technique it is uh it can simply be that you have a higher vision or you know you know that you have a higher potential that you can reach how can you really live that today and not just have it in your mind as a dream for some day powerful thank you thank you so much shrikant i think um, 
the best impromptu conversation i've ever had on this podcast uh, really it's, appreciate it's, uh, it. it's such a pleasure shweta for me impromptu uh, conversations work much better i can't prepare and speak uh, <laughs> that is a challenge i have with my son also he say your videos no i said i can't <laughs> it happened it happened if it doesn't it happened deal with it that's it yeah Absolutely. I'm so glad that you came on here to have that impromptu conversation. Really appreciate it. And uh, we will redirect our listeners to find you on LinkedIn, stay connected with the many amazing content that you create there. Yeah. Thank you so much, Shweta, for having me here. It uh, was, was a wonderful conversation. We connected last week and last week. We just connected two days ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.